All right, guys. So let's check to see if this is up. I mean, you aren't Hopefully. like streaming live now, and this is the first part of the episode. You started yeah, off yeah, last time are. with like a cough. Do you want a, a, an <laughs> inauguration cough on the microphone or something right now? Well, I'm, I'm just making sure. Do you guys see? Is it live? Oh, no, we are live. Good, okay, see, we're good. Go. All right, looks like we're live. Okay. And uh, all right, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, send this out on Twitter, just so people know that we're live. And whenever you want to do the introduction so it's not awkward, <laughs> we're good. All right. And three people watching, most likely all us. I'm showing one, but I'm showing three now. Oh, the wonderful. Person. Yeah. All right. So if you guys are watching, maybe like post something in the live chat so we know or we know there's this is actually working. We're not just talking to ourselves because that's a little bit depressing. <laughs> Sam's almost done, and then we'll go ahead and start off the episode just with a quick intro of you know who I am because you've never seen me before in your life probably. Uh, <laughs> You know who Sam is and uh, what we're going to be covering today. All right. Yeah. So it looks like I'm done with that. All right. Cool. So, um, yeah. Welcome, guys. Uh, welcome back to our second uh, live stream, which, you know, we've titled as Episode One because our first one was kind of more of a uh, test pilot kind of deal, our first time doing it. So, this is going to be our second one. And,. Um, See, I, for, I forgot which scene it is already. <laughs> okay, it's that one. Okay. This All right, wonderful. Really high production, <laughs> really high production value here. It's alive from WCCF. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. So I'll go ahead and just steal it for a second and introduce yeah. myself. Um, my name is Michael. I've known Sam for a little while at this point, um, or a long while, I guess now, whatever it is. I'm actually in one of his really, really old videos back from like 2014, <laughs> messing up when I was just brand new to the industry. Um, right now, I work with Silverstone Technology. I'm the manager over here for North America. Um, so when we do mention something like cases or power supplies or products that my company makes, just keep that in mind with a grain of salt. I'm probably a bit biased. I'll try to not be, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah. Uh, we're going to cover a couple of topics today. Yeah. They're in the title, so you can go ahead and read that, obviously. But take it away, yeah. Sam. And, uh, of course, you guys know who I am. I'm uh, Sam. I'm the editor-in-chief at Custom PC Review. And um, so we'll start off, yeah. So uh, we got a couple, ti a couple uh, you know, uh, topics that we kind of pre-chosen already uh, that we're going to talk about. Uh, but, you know, definitely go ahead and, you know, leave some comments in the, in the chat and, uh, we'll definitely be sure to, uh, cover them in a Q and A or something at the end. So, uh, the first thing that, uh, we have to cover is, um, another AMD Ryzen thing. Uh, so this was actually covered by Tom who couldn't make the podcast, unfortunately, but, um, so yeah, Tom, uh, kind of found some information online. And uh, I think this was from Overclock 3D, and uh, they found this on on uh, the GDC website. But basically, what happened was there was um, uh, like all these shows. They have a a schedule with you know all the different presentations that are about to take place. And basically, there was one piece in there that was talking about optimizing you know games and stuff for. Uh, AMD's upcoming Ryzen CPU and basically they kind of leaked in there a little in the description that uh, uh, that the AMD Ryzen CPU was recently launched which you know um, kind of like hints at the fact that it might be launching uh, for uh, or during GDC which uh, makes sense yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with AMD, it's really important that they get this launch, you know, perfectly down right. So I can understand why they've been so secretive and not wanting to share as much as possible because they've been behind so for so long. So you know, by having them launch with Ryzen and their Zen architectures, hopefully they do everything right. Hopefully they make it into a competitive atmosphere again, and we'll see what happens. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, um, AMD's always said Q1 release date. So. Um, 
you know, GDC is scheduled for February 27th to March 3rd. That will be in San Francisco. So uh, if you guys go, you guys might see uh, AMD launch this new chip. So there's that. And um, yeah, let's go on to the second thing that we're going to talk about. Uh, do you want to go to go into one of yours first, or yeah? Um, so okay. I'll bring up the the Doctor Zaber um, Century PC. Okay. So cool. this is actually something that obviously with Silverstone we make a lot of computer cases, but we keep a, an eye on a lot of the you know the crowdfunded things that are happening out there. Um, so recently, this is actually an Indiegogo campaign that just popped up by Doctor Zaber. They're a small Polish team. Um, on hard forms back in 2014, they actually got together and they went ahead and made a posting saying, you know, we want to make something that's really compact. Uh, currently with with my company we have something that's about 14 liters but they wanted something that's seven liters that's just the total volume of the case something that seemed to be really compatible with um or comparable more so to the current existing consoles out there xbox or playstation or whatever else you might have so after about two years or almost three years at this point of, of you know the, the community giving feedback giving input after sampling after production um, they actually launched the Indiegogo campaign, and within a matter of a couple of minutes, they actually smashed through their original $15,000 goal. And what are they at right now? Like uh, almost $200,000 worth of, uh, of of money raised for the actual project. Yeah, 150000 yeah. yeah, that's that's really impressive. Yeah, considering but they're going to get there, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, look, their, their original their goal was less than 200000 <clears throat> So either way, whatever they're doing, they're going to go into production. That's really impressive for these guys, especially mm -hmm. when you take a look at the actual per, the, the cost of these cases. It's about $200 for the entry level ones. Mm -hmm. um, so we're always really excited whenever we see something like this because it's just pushing more people to think more than a, you know, your typical ATX box. It pushes a smaller form factor, pushes people to be a bit more innovative and not just you know, taking what you have and, and putting it into a big ATX, but you know, compressing it, making it tiny and making it more unique, making it your own. So for me, it's really interesting. It's something that's that not a lot of people yeah. are doing, and especially considering that it's crowdfunded and, and kickstarted this way uh, through Indiegogo. I like it. Oh, sweet. What yeah. do you think about it? It looks pretty cool. It, it They compared it, I guess, side by side right here next to a uh, Xbox uh, One. And so, yeah, it's about the same size. Um, the yeah. only thing that... What, what were they able to cram in this? Was well, it like a GT, uh, GTX... 1060 well a couple things power supply wise it is limited to, to sfx and sfxl so you know, okay. your typical atx power supply that's a smaller intel standard version of it mm -hmm. um we do make power supplies nowadays that range from like 300 watts to 800 watts so realistically you can fit anything inside of there you just have to keep that in mind when you're buying your parts and the only other thing is that they always limit the uh the graphics cards so i haven't researched too much in terms of if it supports uh anything with regards to um, anything beyond reference or what's the limitations with the height with depth and if it does more than a two slot or anything to that effect um, but you always have to, to compromise when you're making these small form factor cases but, yeah but it, it looks like they've got it's, there's just a lot of room for you know different components and stuff in here so yeah it could be a really cool um, you know just pc for the living room or even maybe like a, a, somebody's like main system if they're really limited well, and even with desk space, single GPU performance nowadays, I mean, if you do pop something like a 1080 inside of this, you find a compatible one and everything mm -hmm. is good to go with it. You can run VR. You don't have to have dual GPU setups. I mean, you, you can pop any type of CPU into it, obviously provided your mini ITX motherboard can go ahead and adequately cool it off, depending on what the performance of those guys is going to be. Um, but from a GPU perspective, mm -hmm. as long as it breathes freely, you can do a lot of VR application and pretty much anything that you want without having to worry about it. Sweet. It looks like they're charging uh, $195, and the first batch is, is already sold out. Yeah. Or at least the first batch of the black version. So if you guys want uh, this case, this Sentry case, uh, yeah, you guys might want to hop over there really quickly because they're uh, looks like they're about to sell out of the, the white case as well. And then the next one's going to be $390. bucks. it will get you two cases, but, you know. You don't want to spend four hundred dollars on on two of the same cases in different colors. <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, you're always wondering when the actual production batch is going to be pushed back to. So the ones you're looking at are the first batch, and then afterwards, yeah, yeah. estimated I mean, in April 2017. We saw with the the end case, which was another one that started off on um, hard form, that it took them just a huge length of time to go from the first batch to the second one. There mm -hmm. were obviously upgrades and improvements that they changed around with some of the, the tooling because it wasn't tooling, it was NCT instead, but they changed mm -hmm. around a couple of things with the second batch, but it took them a long time. So if you do like these things, then you definitely, don't want, you definitely want to jump on it as soon as possible. All right, awesome. 
So that, guys, is this Dr. Zaber Sentry case, if you guys are interested. I'll uh, probably put a link in the description below once we end the show. And the next thing, I guess I'll cover something that I wanted to cover, uh, which is HyperX. So, um, I mean, this, this was something that we saw at CES. So, you know, HyperX, they make a bunch of, like, you know, um, nowadays they're, they're kind of like almost a separate arm of Kingston. They've really, like, I remember going to their, their suite at Vegas and, like, literally they, there was, like, Kingston on one side uh, of the uh, hotel. You know, they had a suite. I think it was, like, the Venetian or, or the Palazzo or something. And then you had to walk, like, all the way across to the other side okay. of the hall, which is where they put, like, HyperX. Yeah. So... <laughs> So anybody that hasn't gone to see us before from like from a manufacturer rep or anything like that from us we get to sit there at our suite at our booth whatever the entire day yeah but we always have reviewers like sam that just walk in and they're like you wouldn't believe it i had to walk uphill both ways through a stone storm or whatever is happening in vegas at the time and then they have a meeting for like half hour 30 minutes or hour whatever it ends up coming out to and then they got to book it across all the way to the other side of vegas to get yeah. to another meeting and i just <laughs> That was, that was basically it. Yeah. But um. And that's. But yeah, it's it, like that you know. <laughs> but but uh, at least for for uh, HyperX, it, it really seemed like they were, you know, a, a completely like a separate, almost like company. Just just by by the fact that you know usually when you have like different divisions of companies, right? You'll have um they'll they'll usually put themselves right next to each other. But you know this time around, HyperX was like literally on the other side um of the hall. So. Um, it really seems like they're doing their own thing these days, and um, you know that's cool because they're you know HyperX is just it, it's really aimed at a different crowd than uh, what you know the Kingston kind of like the more traditional, more conservative, uh, you know kind of more OEM business and, and you know kind of deal that they do. So yeah. and when you probably talk to a lot of the system builders that are using this for industry purposes, most of them probably don't even know that HyperX and Kingston are even the same branding and it allows them to have a lot more creative freedom in that aspect and Yeah. 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 Be out there a little bit more. Exactly. So um yeah, so during CES uh visited them. Thought it was really cool that they showed off um you know RGB mem like backlit memory. I mean I know RGB backlit memory, like, everybody has it, right? Like, everybody has it. But, I mean, at least with their product, it kind of seemed a little better. Um, you know, they, they had, like, a uh, they had a software that, you know, you were able to control these memory modules. Like, you didn't have to control them. Or you, you didn't have to hook the memory modules into, like, a separate controller or, like, some sort of USB type of thing. They just kind of got all the information that they needed directly from the DIMM. Hey, what's up, Dennis? Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, most of the other companies, you know, they had like RGB memory, but it would just kind of, you know, be lit and then you can turn it off or um, or they had presets that they would do or, or something like that. So I thought HyperX's solution was pretty cool. Um, it's not coming out yet, though. Um, so second quarter, 2017. You do have to buy a motherboard, though, that, that you know, has support for this kind of memory. It, it's not just really like a plug-and-play. If you do plug-and-play, it's going to be more like, you like know, a, one color. Yeah, it's going to have those, the, the yeah. preset default, whatever pattern it's going to go ahead and elaborate. But if you have MSI, Asus, whatever RGB-enabled motherboard, you're able to go ahead and... Set. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um couple other things. Uh, it looks like they're also revamping the HyperX Cloud Revolver S, which I actually have a HyperX Cloud right, Revolver right here. So yeah, this is, if you guys can, can see it right here, this is the old model um, right here. And then it looks like the new model, they, they've made a couple differences over here. Uh, they put like, you know, more like a rubber piece. Um, and then they also added a uh, Dolby 7.1 surround sound, um, you know, a little dongle and stuff. So uh, they're saying it should come out in like March. So hopefully we'll get some review samples in and uh, we'll be able to test that and let you guys know all about it. Um, otherwise, I guess, you know, just like every other company, they're getting into a bunch of uh, other peripherals. So gaming, mi gaming mice, Got the Pulsefire FPS. Uh, this one's pretty cool because, you know, they're using a Pixar 3310 sensor. And, uh, you know, I love optical sensors just because, like, they're 
just perfect. You know, they track well and and uh, they don't have any weird like skipping issues or or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. A um, couple more mechanical keyboards, which is mechanical keyboards mechanical. RGB. More RGB. <laughs> yeah, RGB. exactly. More RGB co- keyboards. So nothing too crazy there, but. Uh, it looked pretty good. I like the fact that they use a lot of metal in their keyboards. So, you yeah, know, it feels high quality. I'm still waiting for somebody to fully encompass the full RGB ecosystem. Because, I mean, right now you have a lot of people like Razer that are making it so that you can control your mouse, your keyboard, your mouse pad. Um, and then you have like Asus MSI that will let you go ahead and control your, your motherboards, your RGB case lighting or LED strips. But there's still no full interaction between the two of them. And I'm not talking about doing patterns always like you're seeing on the keyboard over there, but more so just like to be able to change to one solid color sometimes but right now there's just there's too many ecosystems for rgb for me yeah i agree so hopefully all the companies will get together you know make a standard and and that way everything's like interchangeable you know like the ram i i think when i talked to them the ram was definitely not something that was like in a very open standard so you know it's not like you could just get uh, this certain RAM and this certain motherboard and then, you know, have it all work with software and everything. And, yeah. and hopefully that's something they'll change down the line. I mean, there's some controller kits out there, but they're just, there's nothing on a universal level yet. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and yeah, next they'll be putting RGB on the CPU. Yeah, that would, <laughs> that would be pretty funny. <laughs> okay. Silverstone did come out with RGB fan grills. You can put RGB as long as it's 120 that's millimeter true. form that's factor true. onto your power supply, onto <laughs> your case fans. And if you have a 120 millimeter CPU cooler, then you could put it on there if you wanted. That's <laughs> yeah. You, you should have brought one. You should have brought one. But... You, no, okay, next time. Next time. RGB All is right. RGB. It's, it's it's you love it or you hate it. <laughs> cool. So what are you covering next? Um, we can go ahead and cover. Gaben did the uh, AMA on Reddit today. Ah uh, so... yes, Gaben. <laughs> <laughs> I just love you know. Just all hail Gaben on that, that picture right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, today he did a, an AMA RGB right? on the CPU socket. Yeah, RGB. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty cool. No. Uh, no. No. It, well, I, I think, think I think that would be hard to see, man. But uh, so who was it that came out with the like the infinity mirror on the RG on the uh, CPU cooler? That was pretty cool. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, there's a there's yeah, an all-in-one. That sounds though. interesting. Though. People are trying to push it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Game. So <laughs> talk to me. I okay. mean, Gavin, I, I know you were following this one more closely than I I was. Okay. I kind of just fell asleep at that time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, with Valve, you know, everything is always super secretive with of what they're doing. But Gavin was actually pretty open with some things today in terms of what he was saying. Oh, so was he? Coming down the list, um, a lot Another of... Another Half-Life? Okay. So <laughs> nothing on Half-Life 3. Everybody asked, obviously, but not even a developer, like, responded sarcastically to it. So it's... Oh, okay. Yeah expected yeah um but they did push a couple of things in terms of they did come out with saying that they are working on a single player experience Mm -hmm. um so whether that's you know something entailing vr whether that's something that's going to be like half-life 3 we nobody really knows yet um but they did say that they are working on something that is single player um and other than that they went on to explain that there's a lot of stuff that they're focusing on with vr um, so, yeah, for example, well, ER is that's pretty much the. the I mean, it was new, a given. I mean, yeah, you, you could, the new buzzword. <laughs> yeah, but specifically, what they were talking about is actually like VR knuckles. So they're rethinking because obviously, um, Oculus they came out with their their touch remotes recently. Yeah. So they're rethinking the the Vive controllers that they had previously to having something that's more interactive with them. So things that yeah. are like knuckles that go onto your hands that you can go ahead and you know I think there's there might be some photos of floating around the internet somewhere, but don't worry. Yeah, about yeah. It. Well, I think I posted something on that uh, a while back, but um, yeah, it, it was it was like a, a little puck that they had, and then um, with the puck, it would be able to like anchor things in in uh, VR, and yeah. so you would be able to to um well, you know stick that pretty much on like anything so the uh we saw one that was like a, a fire hose that was pretty cool um and so like with that one it was like firefighter like training so what you would do is like put on a fire jacket you would get like the fire hose and then this puck would be on the fire hose and so you would be able to like put out fires in in vr well i mean that was that from way. from htc directly as an accessory to their vibe. yeah yeah this was something that was from valve specifically that was more like um think of like the nintendo power glove 
something that you actually wear on you. Um, so that oh, way, as a separate it's accessory. a separate oh, accessory. I see. Okay. Exactly. Right on. So they're trying to more so develop for that. And then with that being said, if they're developing something like that, it's obviously going to be for their own IP software. So they're going to be making games along with it that can fully utilize whatever that, that, mm-hmm. that accessory is. Yeah. So that's exciting. Um, they also made some talks about uh, more so multiplayer experiences with the VR. Mm-hmm. So they're saying, you know, one of the best things that they can think about is something like um, uh, Left 4 Dead. Yeah. If you can make Left 4 Dead a VR experience, but beyond having it as a single player, you know, you have shooting zombies that come at you. If you can make it into multiplayer, that's something different that really hasn't been done too much. There are some mm-hmm. games out there like Arizona Sunshine where, you know, it's, it's better quality zombies running at you. You'd have to defend yeah. yourself after waves. But that's just a single player experience. So people are yeah. asking for it and they, they do acknowledge that it, it is something that would be attractive. Yeah, v, VR multiplayer is pretty cool. I, I know during E3, uh, I played this one that was like, it was a Star Trek bridge crew. I don't know if any, anybody else has heard of that game, but it's pretty cool. It's like a four player, uh, you know, VR game where like, you know, one person plays like the captain, one person plays engineering, uh, one person plays like propulsion and then one more, I believe on like weapons and shields and stuff. And, and you, you really had to work together as a team or, or I mean, you, I guess you could also scream at each other. <laughs> I feel like 90% of the time it's going to divulge and yelling at the one guy. Yeah. Like, why didn't you flip the switch? What yeah. were you doing? It was your job. You had one job. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, it's it's all part of the game. It's all part yeah, of the game. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's like, I don't know if you... There's a bunch of games like that, yeah. Yeah, um, but... Uh, can't, can't wait for some of these newer games. Anything else uh, interesting? From um, they push about... the concept about Source 2. Um, they want to also ultimately make it so that it's, it's free, open source for, to everybody that wants to develop for it, so... That's exciting because, mm. I mean, it gives you an alternate to um, the current engines that are out there. So that's right something on. interesting. And they eventually do want to transition all of their games onto Source Engine 2. Mm-hmm. Um, currently right now, you know, you have Dota 2. And I think that's like the biggest one that they have focused on it right now. But a lot of their other games are just absent. Okay. Yeah. That would be cool to see see some more stuff go on their, their newer engines. Yeah. And there's a bunch of other stuff if you read into the details. And I'm, I'm sure every single thing he said is going to be dissected down to like, the, the single yeah, character yeah. the dot at the end of the sentence because <laughs> yeah with, everyone's with waiting like, for three <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah that that plus you know building rumors and and stuff like that and it's gonna it's gonna be nice i mean we can also jump over to the next uh, vr inclusive thing with do we have the, a new another vr thing well the the concept with the nzxt puck okay because okay yeah when, like, when yeah we'll, we'll go on, on a, over so this is like the new NZXT thing. I'm not gonna. Yeah, yeah. but I and mean, this is from Dimitri. That's actually a pretty interesting video. And oh, it is from Dimitri. Yeah, right yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Hardware connects. Um, so with this one, is NZXT took the problem that a lot of VR people have, and a lot of just you know audiophiles, anybody that has a ton of cables laying around the desk. If you could see Sam's desk right now, he could probably do with a couple of these uh... guys. But the fact that in your desk environment you have so many cables floating around, what do you do yeah. with it? You can't just necessarily put zip ties on it all the time because that's inconvenient or just might just get annoying. So NZXT came out with the product, the puck, and they keep using the phrase puck it all the time, which <laughs> clearly has no other inferences. But <laughs> they have this product over here. It's a magnetic base that you can go ahead and wrap your cables around, mm-hmm. and then you can use it at the same exact time as a headphone stand. And I think it's a pretty good product. I mean, you're able to go ahead and put a thing, uh, put it anywhere you want, really. Yeah. They do show it off but on you, a lot of you cases. You need, like, a magnetic... Uh, Something you know, magnetic. Yeah, exactly. So if you got one of those newer, like, fully tempered glass cases, you kind of out of luck. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, so get something yeah. with the, the sheet metal, yeah, aluminum, some sort whatever of metal. it is. Um, otherwise, I mean, I guess you could still use it to like wrap your headphone cables in or do something with it. But... Yeah, stick it on the refrigerator or something. Just have like you know a gaming headset like right on your refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's, it's right an on. interesting concept, and the pricing yeah. is pretty nice on it. It's twenty bucks, so they're they're not. Yeah, really that's what I saw. Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. trying to make it more general everybody friendly yeah and they have a two-year warranty i can't imagine many people are going to mail this back to nzxt like a year and a half later and be yeah, like probably not i have a defect with my magnet it's not as strong as it used to be because <laughs> realistically yeah. it's, it's it's plastic molding in a magnet so yeah <laughs> i don't know how much can actually go wrong but uh... yeah is that right the color is blue red and purple i don't know who wrote this one. Oh, it's tom again yeah, no i saw I guess. they're doing two colors i think two colors to launch on their website it's, okay. it's the gray that you're seeing and then I guess white, but I might be wrong. Okay. So uh, I don't know. I mean, Tom wrote about. Oh, it looks so like sure. it's black and white, and then there, there's also a range of colors okay. after that. So 
okay cool yeah. so yeah if you guys are interested in something like that it looks like a great product that would probably not work on my case unfortunately okay you need a silverstone so, case yeah yeah i probably need a silverstone case you need a silverstone case <laughs> <laughs> all right cool so uh next up is uh seagate so yeah it looks like uh you know seagate isn't selling hard drives as well as they have been before because they're about to close uh, their Suto manufacturing plant, and they're going to lay off 2,000 employees, or 2,127 employees. Yeah, this is a bit of old news in terms of this came out last week that it's shutting down, but the reason Yeah, it was, it was from the uh, first quarter uh, earnings report. Yeah, so. but the reason it's popping up now is just because I think they said on the 17th or the 18th is the last day that the employees are going to be there. So oh, today officially is when they kicked people out, um, and, you know, it's... They're transitioning yeah. to a more optimized, yeah, whatever their new thing is. But <laughs> yeah, I mean Seagate, you know, I mean, it kind of sucks, you know, one of the largest hard drive manufacturers. But I mean, you know, in this day and age of SSDs, you know, it's it's kind of like you got to make the transition, right? You got to make the transition, or you're gonna, you know, you're gonna close down. So and I mean, yeah. beyond Seagate, it's just. Yeah. It's almost indicative of the entire industry as a whole. There's so many companies that have been just fading away, and there's not as many new guys popping up to replace it. Yeah. So it's hard yeah. to see, but it yeah. is. Yeah, so hopefully Seagate will make some sort of like acquisition or something down the road. You know, I know Western Digital, uh, was, it, was it like last year or two years ago, they, they bought SanDisk, you know, so now they're kind of like back in the game. Uh, but unfortunately, Seagate uh, is not in the same boat. So good luck to them. And uh, yeah, it looks looks like, well, Tom wrote this article too, but it looks like they went down from six, almost 60 million hard drive ships shipped to uh, just 38.9 million drives recently. So quite a bit, big dip uh, in just two years, yeah. I believe. Yeah, and two again, years, yeah. It's like you mentioned, I mean, you, you have a 960 over there. It's just all M.2. Yeah. Well, oh, that's a secret. So. Well, that's for me to show off later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. What else you got? Um, what else did we put on there? Uh, do we want to talk about Steam Machine? Well, no, no, that was the Shield. We can cover the Shield. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, Shield. So, yeah, th th this cool. really isn't anything new. This this came out during CES. NVIDIA made some big yeah. splashes about it, uh, yeah. just talking about that they're coming out with the new Shield. It's going to be something that's, you know, think of more so like the, what do you call it, the Google streaming thing uh chromecast yeah chromecast. Yeah, it's chromecast it's like a chromecast for gamers streaming yeah the streamer for gamers so you, you have the typical suites on there or the typical applications so you have you know netflix youtube hulu hbo whatever else you imagine but on top of that it's capable of going ahead and doing like 4k rendering you, you can also go ahead mm -hmm. and if you have an nvidia gpu go ahead and remote desktop from your gp your desktop based unit over to the actual tv and be able to play on there um with low uh, input delay on that part Mm -hmm. um, the pricing is a little bit high for most people, 200 bucks. Yeah, 200 bucks. It's... And if you have a smart TV, all the other apps are kind of included nowadays, or there's cheaper alternatives like the Chromecast. Um, but, I mean, obviously they keep making it, so hopefully it keeps selling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, they, they, uh, the cool thing about this is like they also integrated this uh, with you know Google Home mm -hmm. or... Well, you know. they're, they're trying to do that right now. So yeah. they're, they're making it so that just like with Google Home or, or the Alexa systems... Um, you can be able to control your, your thermostat at home, your lighting system, as long as you have, for example, a smart hub, like with the Samsung smart hub, mm -hmm. um, or if you have like a Nest thermostat, you're able to go ahead and dictate to this as well, either through the controller or through the microphone or the, the controller or the remote of what you want it to do, and it will go ahead and do it. Yeah. So it's, it's all interesting developments. And like I said, I mean, it's, it's an integration of pretty much everything into single devices, into a single ecosystem. It's, it's just kind of the wild west at this point with home automation of, if you look around at CES, LG had one, obviously the Alexa, the Google Home, and all these other plethora of different AI home bot things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Trying to make your life easier, so. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, you can go hop on. What's the difference between the Shield and Shield Pro? It looks like they're selling this for a $100 difference. Well, I mean, the Shield but, is out uh, right now. I guess the Shield Pro is going to be coming soon. <laughs> it's pre-ordered. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. All, all I have to say is I didn't make it into that uh, press conference because, like, I was li I was literally like five minutes late, and they were like, "Oh, this this uh, press conference is completely full, but feel free to stream it." So I I, I uh, basically 
like sat outside the AMD suite and I was streaming the NVIDIA live live show and and uh yeah it was it was cool though because like you know 30 or 40 minutes later they had the AMD event and I forgot all about NVIDIA so <laughs> shame on you all right so um here's kind of like the final thing that I just wanted to touch upon um recently put up an article uh you know I, I kind of got got tired of like just trying to explain what a bunch of the the lcd uh you know screen technologies were and stuff like that because uh, you know every time i write an article about you know uh a new monitor or something it, it would just constantly um yeah it would just be like constantly you know different technologies and like stuff like that so i kind of made it simple you know talked about lcds talked about tn panels talked about ips uh talked about va panels um you know, and uh, a little bit about, you know, quantum dot technology, which is part of like, which is, you know, that's, that's uh, something that a lot of, I guess, the Samsung VA panels are using. I uh, talked a little bit about OLED and, and stuff like that. So um, if you guys are interested in, you know, learning a bit more about monitor technology or something like that, and um, yeah, definitely go ahead and check that out. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that. And uh, I think that's all we had yeah. for previous... I guess previous uh, topics that we we're going to cover. So yeah, I'm also going to go ahead and and plug the forums because uh, you know I just got to. Uh, if you guys are, you know are interested and uh, got, guys got some questions or something, you know go ahead and hit the forums, um, ask some questions, whatever. Would love to see you know more from the community and all that good stuff. So. With that being said, also I mean this is this is episode one. Um, yeah. So <laughs> obviously there's a lot yeah. of. Uh, things that we could improve on. So let us know what you guys would like to see us change around. Or if you have suggestions, feel free to leave that in the comments as well as live streaming comments. We yeah, always love yeah. That. yeah. Or, you know, if you have any questions or something like that, you maybe uh, drop it in forums and then we'll take a look and maybe we'll answer the questions from the forums next time, you know? Yeah. I mean, you have some, but you're, you're choosing to ignore yeah, it. Yeah, I, I do have some. Hold on. We're going to do a Q&A real quick because like all the freak, all the like four viewers right now that we have so have some questions <laughs> and i'm assuming the two of those four are probably us <laughs> so yeah exactly <laughs> all right let's see rgb on the cpu side okay we kind of covered that uh be more fun to do a land party of people playing vr or something yeah i agree you know that and, and i think that's that's why I, I was bringing up uh you know star trek bridge crew because like that's how they uh, when I went to the NVIDIA, like, suite at E3, that's sort of, like, what they had, you know? It was, like, four four computers that were, like, right next to each other. Everybody had their VR headsets on, and we basically tre- screamed at each other. But but even, even then, though, you know, like, just the fact that, that they had, you know, we all had microphones on, and we were talking into the microphones, and it was, like, in an immersive experience. Like, you really don't need to be right next to the person because, like, you can scream at them, and they would hear you perfectly fine through their headset and it's not like they would see you i mean they might smell you if you smell really bad but you know it's <laughs> other than that like you could literally turn your head like i remember um because i was playing the weapons guy so like on my right was like um i think on my on my right was gee i don't remember i think the engineer and then like right behind me was the uh, driver and then like you know soup well yeah like behind me to the right was like the captain and so you could literally turn your head and then you can you know wave your controllers and then like your character in the game would like wave to the other person so that's pretty cool wish you could like flip them off in game like that would be pretty fun (laughs) and for me i always like two years ago i remember going to to ces and also talking to the guys over at virtuous omni that was the uh the treadmill for vr if you remember what those were the, the the Oh the yeah, one you could strap yeah. into a harness. Yeah, yeah, and, be, like, yeah. and then they had like the the, the specialty like, shoes. They, and they the had the big gun and everything. And everything. Like yeah, 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 I remember that. But I just remember when I was seeing those originally. I, I either <laughs> picture that it's going to be good for a couple of applications, but the one that really stood out is just arcade use. I mean, because yeah. I realistically, I don't think very many people are going to sit there and say, "Okay, I'm going to put this giant <laughs> thing in the middle of my living room, and my you know girlfriend, wife, whatever, they're going to be okay with it just <laughs> sitting there 90 percent of the time not used." But with that being said, I can picture something like that being used at an arcade. Like, I mean, yeah. I don't know when the last time you went to one that had, like, the, they had back in the day that beachfront VR machine that you could basically put on your head and be able to shoot things, guys. Yeah. 
So th things like that, I imagine they'd yeah. be able to go ahead and use those for more social purposes. But like Sam is saying, with, with having it like for a LAN party event, I, I mean, the whole point yeah. of VR is to be able to go ahead and communicate with people over a distance. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, but you know what, though? You know what? I think HTC, uh, so I went to the HTC press conference when I was at CES. And uh, one of the things they were actually talking about that I thought was, was kind of cool, actually, was um, they were, they were uh, like marketing like, um, like VR arcades. So I guess this is like a pretty popular thing in, in, uh, in Asia right now. But basically, it would just be like a bunch of, you know, like, I guess, I don't know what, like arcades, basically arcades. You go into a room full of like VR headsets and stuff. And uh, you would basically just go in, like, you know, pay for, you know, a certain amount of hours at a certain rate. You would put these headsets on and you would play your game. And then, um, yeah, and then, you know, HTC would cover all the back end. So they had their Vive port, um, you know, like ecosystem where they would, you know, sell you games. Or uh, for these companies, they would rent them games. Yeah. So, and then they would rent them at like a certain price. The companies that run ran these arcades, they would charge another price, and then you know they would obviously make some sort of profit. But you know it it could be something that's pretty fun. I know um, HTC like allows anybody pretty much to um, use that software, and it's like pretty much almost like a turnkey solution for you to start a VR arcade. So if any uh, any of you guys are are interested in in doing something like that. Uh, you can. <laughs> and Dennis brings up a good point. There's a lot of people that are doing it with more so like augmented reality AR application. So yeah, for example, he's saying that over in uh, Salt Lake, there's a rumor that you get a VR backpack. Um, like Zotac is working on a couple of those guys where you can go ahead and have the whole ecosystem in your backpack off of like a mini PC. Yeah. As opposed to having all the cables running around. And then you can go ahead and, you know, just do whatever you want in a more of an AR uh, perspective as opposed to just purely VR. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know there's a couple companies that were working on like, um, like wireless VR and stuff as and well. It's so, interesting, you know, but... you don't even have to be tethered one day, you know, to a backpack, which, you know, that, that would kind of be my ideal solution to actually play games in VR and, and walk around and stuff. There like, are still a lot of hiccups with that though, because you have input delay, no matter what any input delay does yeah, hurt. Yeah because you can, it increases the chance of motion sickness. And on mm -hmm. top of that, you have to have such a clean link between the, the transmitter and receiver that if anybody walks between it, all mm -hmm. of a sudden you're flying around the room and now you want to vomit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it can be done. And HTC did come out with some stuff where they're actually working with Intel for a wireless solution that's not based off of you know your standard RF, but instead it's mm -hmm. based off of like Ygig, I think they were saying. Yeah. Um, so when those come out, that'll be interesting because that's, yeah. that's using I, I saw existing. that. Yeah. I saw that they, they were trying to do that, but there was like literally no... There's like no time, like time frame at all for yeah. whatever. So. I mean, it's all quote unquote theoretical. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but when it comes out, it's always yeah. exciting and it's the wild west of VR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. So looks like we have a couple more uh, quick comments that could probably answer. Do you guys uh, see or hear about the interview with Red Gaming Tech uh, with the marketing guy? Or whatever from AMD in regards to Vega. No, I did. <laughs> I didn't. So short answer. I'll be sure to check that out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't see anything. Awesome. So that looks like it's all the questions that we have for today, and it has almost been, I think, an hour anyway. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and end it here. And quick, um, quick shout out. So we did the episode. Oh, oh, we forgot something. Actually, oh. we were gonna present like some cool like cool gear that we have on the table right not what i was mentioning but okay <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so he, he's gonna do a shout out later but i'm i'm just gonna show out some show off some cool gear uh last week i did this thing uh i don't i don't know where the cables are oh it's right here yeah so so last week i i did this thing right uh, reversible micro, uh, what is it? Micro USB. Micro so USB. reversible micro USB. It's made by Silverstone. Um, I didn't even know that they made this, like, because you know something like this just basically like made USB C completely pointless, right? Yeah. So yeah, reversible micro USB. You can you know plug it in one way, you can plug it in another way. But um, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. That was last week, and uh, so this week I'm just gonna show off the uh, 960 Pro, right? So I reviewed this. Um, oh God! Yeah, I, I have to bring it because <laughs> you guys, you guys I, I turned like. off autofocus. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it'll kind of look like this. It's it's tiny, but this tiny M.2 stick, right? Um, two terabytes of storage. So 
it's really cool. Um, it's fast. I have the I have a review somewhere uh, on custom PC review. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and uh, take a, take a look in there. Jelly, I know. Yeah, yeah it's it's pretty. Cool. <laughs> you want to try to explain this? Huh? Well, I mean, this this is your cool product, which which you got from my room here, which you gave to me anyway. Yes. So it, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so with M.2 becoming more and more popular, everyone's trying to you know push them to the actual max of what they can perform on. But with that being said, there's such a small ecosystem that a lot of the times nowadays they do overheat um, just with everything they're pulling out. So at Silverstone, we're trying to come out with some stuff to be able to go ahead and help you out with the thermals on those guys. Yes. So it's not the newest invention in the world, but we do have these thermal pads. Ah, look at that. <laughs> Two different thicknesses depending on your setup. Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah. But... What is this made out of? Like, how, do, how does it conduct heat? Or does it just kind of like spread heat? Well, the concept that we have for these guys is that they don't have any type of a heat sink attached to them. You're actually going mm -hmm. ahead and using these, applying them between the actual M.2 and the PCB either on your motherboard or your PCIe card. So you're using the actual PCB as the heat sink. Um, and from mm -hmm. our testing, when you're using it on one of, for example, our, our PC, um, PCIe adapters, it does give you about a 10 yeah. degrees delta. So it's just something cool. And I mean, even you're feeling it right now, your, your hands are yeah, a little yeah, hot. It, already... Yeah, it gets, it gets a little bit bit cooler. It kind of almost feels like a, like cooling gel or something like yeah. that you would use for your, your pillow or, or something like that. So Yeah. So Cool. Yeah, I'll probably give that a shot. Sam will test, test it out. Or something and... See what happens with it. Yeah. It's just something cool that we thought we would bring along. Um, awesome. Yeah. So you were going to do a shout out. Yes. So the last time Sam did episode zero, we got negative one subscriber. <laughs> So, oh, that's true. Yeah, I hope that you know some more people <laughs> subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, <laughs> this uh, this live stream may 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 be causing problems. <laughs> yeah. So, give us feedback. Let us know what you guys want to improve. Um, all the ending Absolutely, closing statements yeah. that Sam will typically always give. Go ahead. No, I don't usually give a closing statement or anything. Like I haven't figured that part out yet. So you know that that might be on another episode, but. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's all, all we really got. So yep. uh, thank you for, guys for watching. Um, we'll probably try to standardize more like in the next couple of weeks in terms of like when we're gonna do these live streams because I know the last one we did did it on like a Saturday and this one we're doing it on like what day is it today? Wednesday, Wednesday, right? Yeah, Sit today's a Wednesday. To the microphone. Yeah, so so today's a win oh sorry, yeah. That's um, me. Is that is that better? Yeah. Maybe you could put up a screen or something to seem more official. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll try to try to. Do, oh, in in the screen. You have your second room that you're building right oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, yeah, I'm I'm building out an another room right now that you know will look like a lot better and and y actually I do have a second screen right there. In fact, I have like two screens back there. They're just not on. <laughs> there you can see. There, there's another screen right there. I don't think that's what they meant exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah yeah no for sure um no we're, we're building something out right now and and uh it, you know that will look better and 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 a little more official but you know just kind of want to um maybe set set up a time on on when we want to do these live streams that way uh i'm not surprising you every time like hey it's saturday at 5 p.m like let's do a live stream it's wednesday let's do a live stream so We'll figure it out, and uh, yeah, we'll keep keep you guys all posted, and uh, you know, be sure to let us know uh, in the comments which you guys would like to see. Also, there's forums uh, if you guys want to check that out, and uh, maybe you guys could let us know what we could do better. So, uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next stream.